Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you. In this video, I am sharing my learnings from the Middle Discourses 19 uh, given by the Buddha, which is two kinds of thought. Uh, the link to the discourse is given below. You can read the full discourse to get your own insights and learnings from this discourse and do also share the learnings in the comment section. Okay, so uh, see basically here uh, Buddha said uh, that prior to his awakening, before he got awakened, Buddha, when he was doing his practice, when he was doing his penance, Buddha thought of meditating by, Buddha thought to himself that why don't I, when I meditate, see what happens is, there, there is a natural tendency of the mind to generate the thoughts, right? So Buddha said that, okay, no problem, let, let me do this, that I'll create like two buckets and I'll like any wholesome thought, I will put in the wholesome, good, positive bucket and and I will reflect, suppose unwholesome thought comes, negative thought comes. What I will do is that I will reflect on the negative, the drawback of that thought that it leads to hurting myself, hurting others or hurting both. It blocks wisdom, it's on the side of anguish and it doesn't lead to extinguish. And when I do that, it goes away, it went away, right? And second, Buddha said that if I do a positive thought, then I will reflect on the positive attributes of that thought and then that thought goes away. So, so this is like one of the kind of a meditator, meditation approaches that Buddha in this discourse was trying to actually put through. Like this is something that he evaluated, right? That how should, you know, this is something that I do. See, when you do this anyways, what you are doing is that you are establishing mindfulness of the thoughts as they arise, right? So generally what happens is that when thoughts come, we feel that, you know, our meditation is not happening and, you know, it, things are not working. But... We make here, in this, here what we do is that we make the thoughts only the object of our meditation and we classify them either as a wholesome, as a wholesome thought which would lead us to, you know, positive things and unwholesome thoughts which will lead us in a negative direction, right? Because as Buddha said in Dhammapada verse 1 and 2 also, we are what we think, our minds, uh, our thoughts, you know, create what we, you know, what make us what we are, right? So, so then there is this thing that uh, Buddha said that if they often consider about sensual thoughts, if they often think about and consider th sensual thoughts, they've given up the thought of renunciation to cult. That means when you think about all the wrong thoughts, the lustful, sensual thoughts, basically you are actually leaving the good thoughts, the positive thoughts. Because you are not leaving the scope for those thoughts of love, compassion and goodwill to arise. Because you are devoting your energy into those negative thoughts then what happens is that they are, that people who do that their mind inclines to sensual thoughts then buddha says whatever a mendicant frequently thinks about and considers becomes their heart's inclination right very very important point buddha is trying to make here about the thoughts that we think direct our life we become like what we think right which is also coming in the dhammapada right so Buddha is, is in, in making this thing very important. See, one thing, uh, friends, we do not have any control over what is arising, which thought arises, because there's a lot of stuff that is in our unconscious and that arises, and anything can arise. But we have a control on whether we need, we give energy to that thought or not, whether they, we just allow that thought to pass away, or whether we, if the thought is a good thought, a thought of love or a compassion, we we can give it more energy and allow it to be in elongated. This is what is the right thought. One of the noble eightfold paths is right thought or right thinking. This is what Buddha said. Negative thoughts, just don't pay attention. Let them go away. There is even a five ways that Buddha said that you can stop the negative thoughts. Right? Positive thought, Buddha want, Buddha says, elongate, stretch them. Right? This is right thinking. Right? Because what we think depends where we go in life. Right? So Buddha now here gives an analogy about negative thoughts. Buddha gives the analogy of a cowherd who is taking care of his crops in the rainy season. Now in the rainy season what is there is that the crops are all grown up and he has to take care of his cattle that they do not go in someone else's fields and they damage the crops. Because if they do so, then what will happen is that the, the cowherd may get fined or imprisoned or executed. So cowherd has to take a lot of care. So Buddha is taking, similarly, when negative thoughts enter in our mind, we have to take a lot of care and they ensure that they do not proliferate. 
in our mind. You know, this is what happens. One negative thought comes, then second comes, then third comes, and then we give it more energy and we do overthinking and then they spread. So we have to be like that coward, take very much care that our negative thoughts, even if they are there in our mind, we, they are just at one place. They do not spread everywhere. Then uh, Buddha said about positive thought. So Buddha said that when I he continued meditation, a wholesome positive thought came. So he reflected on the positive of that thought that it doesn't lead to hurting myself, hurting others or hurting both. It nourishes wisdom and it's on the side of freedom from anguish and it leads to extinguishment. All the positive aspects of that thought. See, Buddha is just reflecting on what the positives will happen if he thinks that thought. So he reflected on that, that thought and that thought also went away. So again, whatever you think, our Buddha is saying, whatever I thought reflected about that thought and the thought went away. Right? So, so again, the analogy that here uh, Buddha is giving about the wholesome thought is that suppose it's the last month of summer, summer where all the crops have been gathered within a village. That means all the crops have been, you know, cut and there are no crops. And then the cowherd uh, who is taking care of the cattle, uh, basically that cowherd is not, doesn't need to worry that where his cows are going. Right? He's just need to be mindful that they are there. Because the cows, the crops are anyways cut, there is no, you know, harm that will come on the to the crops. Similar way, when the positive kind of thought is there, then you just need to be mindful that that thought is there, right? You don't need to make any much effort. But whereas negative thought, you need to make make enough effort to ensure that they do not grow, because one thought leads to another, and that way, right? So then the Buddha thought. So then a Buddha thought that if I were to keep thinking on the positive thought, on the wholesome thought, all day, all night, I see no danger that will come, right? So, it's good, no, if I, if thoughts of love or compassion come and I keep thinking them, there is no danger. This is actually the path, one of the Noble Eightfold Paths, right thinking, that I keep thinking that thought. But, even here, Buddha realized that thinking even in wholesome thought for too long would tire his body and when the body is tired, his mind becomes stressed and the mind is stressed it is far from from immersion. That means mind would not be able to concentrate because too much of thinking a positive thought also takes mind's energy. So that Buddha realized. See, this is what Buddha is sharing his journey of towards enlightenment. What he learned. So one is that the approach that you know I just keep on thinking positive, positive, and you know no. There also your mind has limited energy. So next Buddha said that okay. Then what I understood is that I need to still my mind. So he still my he stilled his mind and remained in absorption, remained in concentration. This resulted in rousing of energy and mindfulness, totally established and undisturbed. And this caused Buddha to enter the four states of absorption and get the three knowledges. Right. So basically, what Buddha is trying to say here is that when I stilled my mind, then automatically the good thoughts came, and they uh, they grew. Right. There was no effort on his part. That he need, but the important thing was, instead of thinking continually good, 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 good thoughts, Buddha came, stilled his mind. That was more important. Be in a still mind because only in that still mind you get that level of concentration to get the three knowledges. Right? What are the three knowledges? Those knowledges of recollecting past lives and that you know sentient beings get reborn according to their deeds. Right? So all these things. This he got when he. His mind was still. So the important thing is that in meditation, at one point, we have to focus on stilling our mind so that that, that deep concentration we need to get so that you know we get those kind of, we enter the four stage, stages of absorption, four jhanas and the three knowledges. Right. So now there is this one analogy that uh, in this discourse I, uh, is, that is given. Uh, and I'll read it through verbatim how it is given. Suppose there is a forested wilderness. There, suppose that in a forested wilderness, there was an expanse of low-lying marshes and a large herd of deer lived nearby. Then along came a person who wants to harm, injure and threaten those deer. They close off the safe, secure path that leads to happiness and open the wrong path. There they plant domesticated male and female deer as decoys so that in due course, the herd of deer would fall to ruin and disaster. Then along came a person who wanted to help the herd of deer be safe. 
They open up the safe, secure path that leads to happiness and close off the wrong path. They get rid of the decoys so that in due course, the herd of the deer would grow, increase and mature. Now, Buddha is saying that I have made, he made up a simile to made a point. Now, what is the simile? The expanse of the low-lying marshes right, is the term for sensual pleasures. Large herd of deer is termed for sentient beings. We, all of us. A person who wants to harm or injure is the Mara, the wicked, the personification of all evil. Wrong path is the wrong eightfold, eightfold path. Right? It means wrong thought, wrong action, wrong livelihood. Domesticated male deer is the term used for greed. Right? These are all decoys which keep us you know, uh, trapped. Demos domesticated female deer is the term for ignorance. Person who wants to keep the herd of deer safe is the term for the realized one, the perfected one, the fully awakened Buddha. Right? Buddha, for his all his compassion, he he gave all this knowledge of noble eightfold path to us to for our awakening. That is the person. Then the safe, secure path that leads to happiness is, and I will leave leave it to you for guessing, is the noble eightfold path, right? Which Buddha has given for cessation of all suffering. Right? So this is basically a kind of a simile through which Buddha explained uh, this thing. So let's come to the lessons. There are quite a few lessons which I have got. I will I want you to share, reflect on this discourse, read this discourse and share your learnings if possible in the comment section. The lesson is first what we think we become. So I need to be as a, as a person who is practicing on the Buddha's path, I need to be mindful of my day to day what I think. Right? There's this normal default behaviors of greed, hatred, right? All this sexual desire. No, it's normal, it's default. But no, if I am on the path of Buddha, if I'm walking on the path of Buddha, I have to follow the Noble Eightfold Path. One of that is right thought. Be very careful of what I think because that is how I will become. That's the first thing. Second, one, the way of meditation that Buddha has explained, dividing the mind into two classes, wholesome, wholesome, wholesome. And unwholesome also unwholesome. You, you just keep be mindful of the thoughts that are arising. This is like one other way you can evaluate. I don't use that because I practice the Vipassana meditation, which is taught by the Buddha, the inside meditation, which works for me. Just looking, seeing whatever is arising right now. So I practice in the, the inside meditation in the tradition of Mahasi Sayada. So so you can also check the inside meditation playlist on my channel on how to practice inside meditation. But you can reflect, you can check if this kind of meditation approach may work for you, right? Then uh, banish ne negative thoughts. So negative thought comes, reflect on the drawbacks. If thoughts of hatred come in my mind, what has hatred given me? It has only created pain for me, suffering for me. And this suffering is continuing from I don't know how many lives. So I reflect on my, I start reflecting on my negative thoughts when they arise. That okay, this is it. I mean, I don't want to keep, you know, in that cycle of, hate and you know all these things then right thought if right thought comes goodwill compassion you know sometimes we feel good our energy is high good thoughts come elongate it send goodwill and love to your friends your family members even your enemies right so just spread love and compassion that thing we can do then in meditation at a point you need to just be still and then let whatever knowledge and whatever things whatever good thoughts they'll all flow when your mind is still, right? So don't even kind of cultivate and work on creating good thoughts and all. At one point, you have to just still your mind. Right? So yes, this is my lessons. Do share your learnings and lessons in the comment section. I hope my sharing is useful to you in, in some way, motivating you to practice Buddha's path and motivating you to do the reading of the uh, suttas. Right? So uh, if that happens, to even one of you who is watching this channel, watching the videos of this channel, my work is done. Right? So, uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Buddhaya.